Brad Wilsmore, I'm a cardiologist and an electrophysiologist. I'm going to talk to you today about palpitations. So if you want to look at my credentials, I've done a fair bit of stuff, but the punchline is I really specialize in heart rhythm disorders and have done for over 10 years. So what are palpitations? Well, palpitations are the sensation or awareness of your heart beating. It can be common very common, can be normal, can just be you feeling your own normal heartbeat, or can be abnormal. Ectopics are the most common cause of palpitations. Ectopics are usually described as a skipped beat, a missed beat, an extra beat, a little flutter in the heart that lasts just for a second or two. They're very common. In fact, everybody has them. They come and go. They can come a little bit like I say, rainy days you can have floods and storms where it rains every day for weeks you can have droughts where you don't get many palpitations for days weeks months at a time they definitely just come and go they can also occur in a very rhythmical pattern so for example you can get it every second beat that's called bigemony every third beat and that's called trigemony and you can have little runs of non-sustained vt or various forms of your palpitations or ectopic beats. So what's actually happening when you have an ectopic? Well, this is a normal heart and yes, my picture is not anatomically correct. But a normal heart has a top chamber and a bottom chamber. The top chamber is called the atrium, the bottom is the ventricle. Electricity usually starts in the sinus node. Talking about the electrical activity here, not the plumbing. Electrically, the heart starts with a sinus node, fires a spark, electricity goes across the top chamber, down a bridge into the bottom chamber. You get this beautiful regular rhythmical contraction. So it keeps firing and you get this nice regular contraction across the top, down the AV node, into the ventricle. What happens when you get PVCs, however, is that you get an extra firing from the bottom chamber. So you have a couple of nice normal beats there, but then you can see there's a spark from the bottom chamber. That causes an ectopic, which goes back up the AV node, hits the sinus node. So what happens then is you get this compensatory pause. The sinus node says, well, someone else is pacing. I'm going to sit back and relax. Waits, nothing happens. So it fires off a spark again. And so you get this regular contraction starting back up. How many ectopics are normal? Well, there's no exact rule. Everyone has ectopics. In fact, I've been reporting halters for many, many years, and I can barely recall a single halter monitor, 24 hours, where somebody's not had an ectopic. We say normal is less than 100. Most people have half a dozen or a dozen. Occasional ectopics, we say 100 to 1,000, frequent more than 1,000, but in fact, particularly for ventricular ectopics, you need more than 24,000 a day before there's a risk of it weakening the heart. And I had a patient recently, you don't want to break records, but um, she had 88,000 ectopic beats a day. And she was well. So why do I have ectopics? It's a common question. There's often no clear cause. We'd love to be able to tell you exactly why, but there's often not a reason. Every cell in the heart can fire and cause the heart to contract. It's kind of a safety mechanism such that if the sinus node ever fell over, stopped working, did, <clears throat> was fibrosed and didn't function, every other cell in the heart can fire off and that can help you stay alive. And so it's a very fine balance between the sinus node pacing and then the other beats just sitting behind. And sometimes that balance just sways a little bit in the other direction and you can get frequent ectopic beats. Some of the triggers are just exercise, stress, pregnancy, menopause, aging, fluctuations in electrolytes can sometimes cause it. Caffeine might increase the awareness of those extra beats or to some degree ectopics themselves. Alcohol is a common trigger as well as drugs, particularly recreational drugs. 
Uh, some puffers like Ventolin are a stimulant and can have a similar effect as caffeine. And what we really worry about is when your ectopic beats are caused by a weak heart or prior heart attack, then it becomes a little bit more significant. However, it's really important to acknowledge extra beats, ectopic beats, are typically not a sign of a heart attack, not an indication of a plumbing problem, not an indication of coronary artery disease. So what are the consequences? What happens if I'm having lots of these ectopic beats? Well, firstly, they come from the top or the bottom chamber. Atrial ectopics, and in fact ventricular, rarely cause a problem. Much more of an a nuisance or an annoyance type rhythm than a dangerous or life-threatening one. Atrial ectopics may, if they're really frequent and sustained and instead of just an extra beat, they might cause a little flutter, might trip you over into atrial fibrillation. So if your heart goes out of rhythm and stays out of rhythm for a prolonged period of time, at that point we'd be keen for an ECG just to make sure you've not gone into atrial fibrillation. Ventricular ectopics, also very common, very rarely a problem. In fact, there was a study which showed quite clearly that you need 24,000 extra beats a day, which is about one in every four beats or 25% of beats in a day, ectopic beats before there's even a risk of developing a weak heart. And even at that level, most people don't develop a weak heart. And even if you did have that many and got a weak heart, we can usually treat them or fix them and the heart weakness reverses entirely. So it's an entirely reversible condition. What tests do you need if you've got ectopic beats? Well, there's a few things we might consider. A blood test just to make sure your electrolytes, salts and potassium, sodium are all okay. An ECG is usually reasonable, very non-invasive test. Similarly, a halter. A halter is a 24-hour monitor, a patch on the chest surface, which monitors every beat you have for 24 hours and is very good at quantifying how many extra beats you've had in a day. And an ultrasound, just to say your heart's normal, it's not caused weakness, and a weak heart is not causing the ectopic beats. Do I need treatment for my ectopic beats? Well, ectopic beats are very normal and common and if they annoy you or are a nuisance, then we might consider treating them. The options we have are number one, to just observe, monitor, change your lifestyle, get well, get healthy and put them in the background. Option two are medications. Sometimes the medications, which are typically beta blockers, are worse than the ectopics themselves, but some people do get a really good response from beta blockers, suppress the ectopics and tolerate the medication really well. As an alternative, we have calcium channel blockers. Catheter ablation is usually a last resort. We go through the leg into the heart and we can find that patch of cells and burn it. It's invasive. We usually reserve this for people who are having a really high burden, have a developed a weak, weak heart, or are really just not tolerating their ectopics. Can't overstate how important maintaining a healthy heart is. Eat well, exercise regularly, maintain a healthy weight, stop smoking, don't drink, minimize stress as much as you can. Caffeine's commonly regarded as a trigger, but in fact the evidence is not highly supportive and if you enjoy, enjoy a cup of coffee from time to time, everything in moderation is probably okay. So, to finish up, please leave a comment, good or bad, I'm keen for constructive criticism, I'm not looking for heaps of subscribers and some likes. But I do want your comments and feedback. If you're not great with feeding back, please just send me an email and you can see the address there. That's it. Bye for now.